Welcome again to the Daily Connection. Let's pray. Father, we ask your blessing upon this time. We want to be blessed and we know that you have said that those who read this book, the book of Revelation, uh, those who read it, who hear it, who keep it, shall be blessed. So would you bless us during this time? We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, we have reached chapter 10 uh, in the book of Revelation So we're going to talk about the little scroll, the little scroll in chapter 10. And what we're going to, uh, what we're going to see is the seventh trumpet judgment will not occur until the end of chapter 11. So we've got a little bit of a gap before we get to the seventh trumpet judgment. But let's get to verse 1 in chapter 10. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven wrapped in a cloud with a rainbow over his head. And his face was like the sun, S-U-N, sun. His legs like pillars of fire. He had a little scroll open in his hand. Now this is the second scroll we have seen in the book of Revelation. The first scroll uh, contains the, the seven seal and seven trumpet judgments. Here we have this little, John says, uh, scroll, and it contains the mystery which is soon to be revealed. So let's figure out what this mystery is. Notice uh, verse 2, he had a little scroll open in his hand, and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. So this is a large uh, angel, and then verse 3, called out with a loud voice like a lion roaring. When he called out, the seven thunders sounded. Here again we have the the number seven for completion. All throughout the book of Revelation we see the number seven. So the seven thunders sounded. And then verse four, the seven thunders, when the seven thunders had sounded, I was about to write. So John says, I hear the seven thunders sounding and right then I pick up my pen and uh, I'm about to write. Now, he didn't quite have a pen like we do, but, uh, but John is about to write. And uh, now we don't know what they said. We just know he was about to record it. But then notice, but I heard a voice from heaven saying, seal up, close, seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. So it was not to be re- revealed by John at this time. Now, I am reminded by this that the Apostle John was the Apostle whom no question had the best handle on eschatology, that is the study of the end times. Uh, After all, John was privy to some very remarkable information here uh, we see in the book of Revelation. And and in God's providence, John uh, lived to uh, around 100 A.D. uh, and even discipled. Uh, some other folks who were avid writers in church history. So we learn a lot uh, from John when it comes to eschatology, and we'll talk more as we go through the study of the book of Revelation, more of what he obviously taught uh, his disciples as they have recorded for us. But now let's consider verses 5 through 7, and we're going to see exactly what this mystery itself is. So verse 5, And the angel whom I saw standing on the sea... And on the land raised his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, verse 6, who created heaven and what is in it, the earth and what is in it, the sea and what is in it, that there would be no more delay. Now let me just say, uh, notice again how specific God has created everything. There's nothing that exists uh, that God has not, Created Now, verse 7, but that in the days, that in the days of the trumpet call to be sounded by the seventh angel, the mystery of God would be fulfilled, just as he announced to his servants, the prophets. In other words, the Old Testament prophets. Now, the seventh trumpet contains, right? The seventh trumpet contains the seven bold judgments. Now, therefore, this mystery here in chapter 10 of Revelation, has to do with the results of the seventh trumpet. All right, we note that verse 7 begins by saying, in the days of. 
in the days of. So this alerts us to the fact that the seven uh, bold judgments are going to take place not at once, but over a period of time. Okay, now a mystery in the Bible. A mystery in the Bible is defined for us in several different places, but a mystery in the Bible speaks of something that, that has been hidden, something that God has never revealed, either through His Word uh, or in a, in a miraculous way to a prophet or anything like that. It's something that has been hidden that God has not yet uh, revealed. Now, in the Old Testament... Prophets certainly prophesied. All we have to do is read the prophets in the Old Testament. They certainly prophesied about a time of the wrath of God, uh, the, the day of the Lord, the tribulation. They certainly prophesied about that, but the Old Testament prophets also spoke of a kingdom. So what then is the mystery here? Well, the mystery itself... Uh, is the fact that there will be a series of seven climactic judgments that will destroy the satanic man of sin, that is the Antichrist. That was not revealed specifically in the prophets. So the mystery here is that there are going to be seven climactic judgments, i.e. the seven bold judgments, that are going to ultimately destroy this satanic man, this future Antichrist. And all of this... Uh, again, we're going to see in the upcoming chapters with the seven bold judgments. Now, this particular fact was not revealed in the Old Testament. But note that verse 7 clearly says that God will fulfill, God will fulfill what He revealed to the prophets. So here again, I point out how important it is to read and to understand the other 65 books of the Bible before you can really get a grip on the book of Revelation, and most specifically the prophets. And again, what are the books that most believers, at least in my experience and even in my own early life as a believer, the books that, that most believers tend to avoid reading are the prophets. But yet those are the books that we really have to consume and understand to really get the full picture of Revelation. Now, if you read the prophets, you come away saying, you know, there's some, there's some things here I'm not sure about. It almost didn't give me a full picture. Well, that's what the book of Revelation does. The book of Revelation fills in much, puts, puts a period on much of what the uh, Old Testament prophets are telling us in their books. Now, notice verse 8. Then the voice that I heard from heaven spoke to me again, saying, Go, take the scroll that is open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. And then verse 9. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, Take and eat it. Now that's a strange statement, right? Take and eat it. It will make your stomach bitter, but in your mouth it will be sweet. Now notice the angel begins with stomach bitter, Mouth sweet as honey. Verse 10. And I took the little scroll from the hand of the angel and ate it. Now listen, there are some people that uh, suggest that Don, uh, John didn't actually literally eat this, but that he intellectually consumed it. And, uh, but I would say here that the text clearly suggests that he ate it because he's talking about mouth, he's talking about stomach, the same thing that is involved uh, in our eating. So he says he took it and it was sweet as honey in his mouth. So he reverses the order. He says, it's sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach was made bitter. And I was told, you must again prophesy about many peoples and nations and languages and kings. Now, why was it bitter when it hit John's stomach? Well, it was bitter, uh, I would say, because of the severity of the judgments that are about to come. Uh, because from this point on in John's prophetic career that we're going to see here, his, his ministry career uh, under the control of the Holy Spirit as he writes, from here out, every prophecy uh, that he writes is about severe judgment. I mean, he's still got uh, all of these grievous woes to come. But notice in verse 11, we read the word again. So this is no new commission. For John, this is just a restatement of what we read back in chapter 1 and verse 19. The difference being here that the remaining prophecies from this moment on are extra severe. And we're going to begin seeing them uh, in, in just a few lessons. But the next time we'll begin uh, in chapter 11 
And uh, as I continue to read through this, I am just astounded at how marvelous and majestic our Lord truly is.